Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic table in Tableau. So what I have over here is a basic table where we've got product name and product category for our columns, uh, product name for our rows. This uh, table was built using the sample uh, data set in Tableau, the Superstore data set. Um, which we're going to be using for this video. So when I say we're going to make a dynamic table, what I mean is we want to build a table which instead of having fixed, uh, you know, in this, in this specific table, we've got essentially two dimensions, product name and category, and then we have a single measure, which in this case we're looking at sales. Um, now, when, when I say we're going to make a dynamic table, I want to make a table where very easily the user uh, or the person opening the dashboard and will be consuming the data can easily manipulate the table to cover a much wider section, a much wider range of dimensions. So let's, uh, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a parameter. Um, which we're going to use to make our rows uh, dynamic. So we're going to allow the user to choose which dimension um, will be present in the rows. So we're going to right click, create parameter, and let's just call this um, dimension selector. We'll put your rows, and let's make this a string and start listing some options. So we're going to keep product name. We're going to have product category. Let's have product subcategory. Uh, let's just go with those for now. We can expand it later. I'm going to show the parameter. All right, looks good. If we come over here to orders and just have a look, so we have category Okay, let's go with manufacturer. Let's just have a look. What options do we have? We have quite a few, so that looks good. So let's add to our list. Manufacturer. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is create a calculated field, which is mapped to this parameter. Okay, so Essentially, we want to create a calculated field, which we're going to place over here on the rows shelf, which will bring the relevant dimension determined by whatever selected in the parameter. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And for these types of calculated fields, I just like to go with the if function. So if dimension selector equals product name, then product name else if and now what we can do is just copy this paste it copy the same the second row and here we have four options so let's just replicate this three more times and do end okay and we have product name product category product We have category, uh, subcategory, subcategory, and manufacturer. Manufacturer. Okay, so looking good. Now what I'd like to do is just name this calculated field the same as the parameter, but I add the word calc. Stands for just calculation or calculator field. Okay, so we've got that. And now what we can do is we can immediately drag this onto rows. And we can actually test it. So we see product name and we see product name. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. If we do product category, we see it changes product subcategory looks good and manufacturer so so far so good um 
But here's where things get really interesting is we don't need to have one level in terms of the rows. We can have multiple levels. So sometimes you want to do segment, you know, subcategories within your table. Uh, so let me show you how that would be done. What I can do now is just simply right click and duplicate the, the parameter. I'm going to put here level two. Okay, let's go ahead now, since we're going to have multiple parameters, just name them correctly. So that would be level one. We have level one, level two. I just want to make this standard. So we're going to capitalize it. And let's actually do three levels. Okay. To make it super, super dynamic. Okay, level three. And now we can do the same thing with our calculator field. So let's duplicate this guy twice. Let's rename them. Level one. Let's copy this. Okay, this is going to be level two. Okay, let's just got to make sure we rename the parameter within the calculator field. And let's do the last one. So this will be level three. Okay, and this will be three. We just copy paste. And we're looking good. Okay, now we can drag. So we had level one, right? This is level one. Put level two and level three. Now, since we're going to have three levels, what we do need to do is go back here and edit the second and third one, and we're going to add none. Okay, and we make that the first option. So essentially, if we want to group by just one di uh, uh, dimension, then we can. So we've added none. And I really like to place the options in order. So I'm just going to do that. And then I want if dimension selector rows level two equals none, then whoops, blank. Okay, which would be just empty, empty string. Okay, that's level two. Let's do the same thing for level three. Else if and if level three equals none, then blank. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. So we want that to be none and that would be none. And there we go. So we have one dimension and it's not completely dynamic. Right, so I can say, let's look at the category. Within the category, I want to look at subcategories and I can look at my totals. Now, a nice little thing to do in this case is add our, um, our, our rows, columns, and subtotals. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And since we're going to have subcategories, it's good to add subtotals. Now, this case is where it's not going to look so nice. In this case, it's, it's not so great. But if we wanted to do, for example, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, just to kind of demonstrate it, I guess we can do that. It's going to be lots of rows. But at least here, you can see we've got a subcategory. Um, okay, so also, if you turn on subtotals and you end up doing this, you're going to have duplication. So it's really up to you to decide what makes the most sense. If you don't have too many options and there's not really a need for it, then you can just turn off subtotals. Okay, so we've now got dynamic rows. And honestly, we could do the exact same thing for uh, columns, right? So we can go ahead and drag well now instead of we've basically got the rows we need to duplicate 
um, and do this for our columns. All right, so let's do that quickly. Okay, column. Just got to rename everything. And feel free to fast forward uh, in the video at this point. I think you, you're getting the idea. It's just quite manual, but trust me, this duplication and renaming is a lot quicker than, than doing it all from scratch each time. So there we've got our three calculator fields, but now we need dimensions. I probably should have done it the other way around, but it's it's fine. So I'm going to just do that. And this will be columns. Now there might be cases where you want to have different columns to your rows. So then you would just go ahead and and change the values in the, in the parameter and the calculator fields. Okay, and the last one. Okay, now before we forget, we've got to go back to um, to the calculator fields and we need to rename. Okay, just make sure we clean it up. Okay, we don't want the rows, we want the, co the columns over here. And just type it in. If you put your enter, it'll create a bit of extra mess. And then the last one, just notice here we don't have brackets. I want to keep things consistent. Okay, column. Okay, now lastly, this over here. Okay, now what we can do, well, in this case, I, I've added three columns, um, but yeah, it's probably going to be overkill. So just go ahead and add one column selector uh, that's, that's uh, show this parameter and just play with it. So that's product name, subcategory, manufacturer, looks good. Um, obviously, you probably wouldn't go with this because it'd just be too much scrolling, too messy. But you know, maybe for category and subcategory, it would work. Um, and now we can, for example, so now the table is basically completely dynamic except for the measure, which I'm going to tackle next. But I can do category, subcategory, and then here yeah, I could do, you know, product name would be too much, maybe manufacturer. But you get the idea. You can really dice and slice it uh, however you want. Um, the last one we want to do is um, the actual measure, the value in inside the table. So um, for that case, for that I'm going to create a new parameter. We're going to call this measure selector. In this case, we're only going to have one. Um, we're going to have a string list, and we're going to have our sales orders. Um, let's see, maybe we can do profit as well. So we're going to create that. Let's show it. Once again, we need to go ahead and create a calculated field. If measure selector equals sales, then we're going to do some sales. Else if measure selector equals what it was the next one orders then orders then now we can do like count distinct order id it doesn't matter if we got here sum and here count distinct as long as the field the all the values are the same type in this case um just integer or or float so else if measure selector equals profit Let's see what we can do for profit. Then uh, profits, let's do sum of profit. 
this to end. Okay, and this will be our major selector calc. Okay, we're gonna drag that over here. Okay, so if we go sales, we go orders, we go profit. Where it can get tricky is in the case, uh, you know, sales would be like say do dollar figure, profit would be also a dollar figure, but orders would just be an integer. So I'm not going to cover how to tackle that in this video, but that's just a little nuance you got to be careful about when having uh, using a dynamic measure selector. So that's basically it. Um, you can see we this is this video is going quite long, but you can see in about 15 minutes I was able to build a purely dynamic table with multiple levels uh, on the rows um, making also we, our columns are dynamic as well as our measures so that's it i hope you found this video useful if you have any questions on this process then please feel free to write them in the comment section below and if you haven't yet feel free to hit the like button if you found this video useful and if you want to see future videos go ahead and hit the subscribe button thanks for watching